If you have an upcoming video interview, this video will serve as your ultimate guide to online interviews packed full with tons of tips and essential information. Specifically, I'll give you 13 video interview tips to ace your professional and graduate school online interviews. Lastly, I'll tell you how to prepare in advance effectively and I'll give you some questions that you can expect to be asked to practice with. For those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. As you might already know, we help students with admissions to med school and other professional programs because we believe that everyone deserves access to higher education. That's why we give everything we learn in our consulting programs absolutely free on our YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe right now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Before I get into the tips, I want to quickly tell you what to expect in a video interview. So a video interview is exactly as it sounds. It's an interview that is conducted over video instead of in person. There are two types of video interviews, live and virtual. Regardless of your interview type, your assessors could be comprised of faculty members, current students, residents, or even members of the community without a background in your specific field. Live video interviews are conducted using a video conferencing program, perhaps even one that you're familiar with, so something like Skype or Zoom, FaceTime, or Google Hangouts. Interviewers will send you a link to join the interview, or you may have to provide your screen name or your ID, and they'll call you to begin the interview. There are three different types of video interviews that you can expect, the traditional, the panel, and the MMI. A traditional interview is a format that you've most likely experienced throughout your life, so probably in a job interview, and it's your standard one-on-one -on -one interview. A panel interview will involve multiple assessors, often between two to four, with some or all of the panelists asking you questions throughout the interview. The multiple mini interview, known as the MMI on the other hand, is a more complex interview format, as interviewees will be exposed to a variety of different stations, normally between six to 10. Each station is timed and will be focused around a specific question or a scenario known as a prompt. You'll have two minutes to read this prompt and prepare your response in advance before you join with the assessor. Once you've virtually entered the room with the assessor, you'll discuss or answer the prompt for five to eight minutes. Once the timer is up, you'll be automatically transferred to a new station and the process will repeat. A virtual interview is also a type of video interview. However, this format differs from a live interview as it won't be conducted with humans. So instead, you'll be recorded and will answer questions verbally or by typing and admissions committees will review your responses afterward or at a later date. Normally, the interview questions are predetermined and all applicants will be asked the same questions. Prior to your interview, you'll be given instructions on how to join the interview as well as how to set up your microphone and your camera properly. Okay, so now let's get into the 13 video interview tips. Tip number one, practice talking to your computer. Yes, this may sound strange, but you need to practice maintaining eye contact with your interviewers, which in the case of online interviews is actually your web camera. Most of us have a tendency to look at who we're speaking with on our computer screen during a video call, but to the interviewers, this doesn't provide them with the eye contact that they're hoping for, and it actually appears as if you're looking down or sideways or in an awkward position, depending on where you've positioned the interview platform screen. So looking into your camera when you answer questions is the best way for you to maintain eye contact with your evaluator, but no doubt it's gonna feel really unnatural at first as it's not something that we're used to doing. So because it's something that we're not used to, it's important that you practice until this feels normal. Other than eye contact, it's important to practice your responses out loud, either looking into a mirror or ideally while you record yourself. This is a great opportunity for you to review your recorded responses and look for any distracting speech fillers, such as repetitively using the word like or um. You want to try and limit the use of these words because using them excessively will make your thought process appear disjointed and it'll actually make you appear nervous or unconfident. Lastly, watching your responses will help you look for nervous or distracting or unfavorable behaviors, such as touching your face, twirling your hair, or appearing like you're angry. Video interview tip number two, check your username and picture. You know it's not professional? Connecting with an interviewer with a cutie pie for life as your Skype ID, complemented by a photo of your dog licking your face. 
Yes, we're all guilty of having embarrassing usernames, at least at some point in our lives, but now is the time to change your username and picture or set up an entirely new professional account if you really can't go of that original username. If you really can't let go of that professional username. If you really can't, if you really can't let your original username go. The same principle applies if you have to create a new account for an interview platform that you don't possess. Just ensure that you're creating a professional username and use a professional photo. So for example, if your name is Maggie Smith, you could use Maggie underscore Smith and that would be acceptable and professional. Number three is to avoid technical issues. So anticipating technical issues and working to eliminate each potential issue before it happens is essential to a successful video interview. First, start off with your internet connection. It's a good idea to check the speed of your connection by using an online internet speed tester. You can easily search this and Google and a variety of speed test options will come up. If you find that your internet connection is sporadic or if it falls below the recommended internet specs of the interview platform that you'll be using, it's best to connect directly to your router to ensure constant connectivity throughout. It's a good idea to do this regardless of your connection if it's at all possible. If connecting to your router isn't possible, then try to ensure that the room you pick for your interview is close to your router. Distance does make a difference with connectivity, so being closer to the router can ensure better connection strength. Next, you need to test your mic and camera to ensure that they both work beforehand. If you're going to be using an external mic, ensure that you've selected this as an option in your computer sound settings, otherwise your computer may still use the sound from your computer's mic. Closing all programs and internet tabs as well as restarting your computer before the interview can really help ensure that your computer's processing power is maximized. In addition, once you've restarted, quit any programs that automatically open on startup. And finally, keep your computer plugged in for the duration of your interview. Even if you think that you have enough battery and you're at 100%, your interview may take longer than expected and the video draws a lot of power. So having your entire computer shut off because it's out of juice would be disastrous. Video interview tip number four, dress appropriately. So you don't wanna be one of those people that you've likely heard about who decided not to wear pants during an interview or during a conference call and they stood up at some point without remembering that unfortunate choice. Even though your web camera may only see the top half of you, dress exactly like you're at an in-person interview. So this means from head to toe, you should be appropriate. So for example, a suit paired with a button up shirt and a tie for men and a pantsuit or skirt paired with a blouse for women. In terms of color choice, neutral colors are ideal and try to select solid colors as opposed to distracting patterns. In particular, be sure to avoid highly contrasting colors such as a black and white pinstripe top which tend to show up intensely on camera and can distract your interviewers. Tip number five, maintain interview etiquette. Just because you're having an interview online doesn't mean you should disregard interview etiquette. Some students make the mistake of getting too comfortable because they are having an interview in their own home. Talking to your interviewers too casually or in an unprofessional manner is never acceptable. Remember, you are still being assessed as a potential candidate for a specific program. This isn't a fun meet and greet with friends, it's a formal interview and you must ensure that you put your best self forward. In particular, first and last impressions will still make or break your interview. For example, just because you're not shaking hands doesn't mean you shouldn't introduce yourself. Be sure that you begin by introducing yourself, smile, be friendly and courteous, and respond to all questions in a professional manner. At the end of your interview, remember to smile and thank the interviewers for both their time and their consideration. Video interview tip number six, turn off all notifications. It's so important that you turn off all notifications before you begin your interview, not once you've already been interrupted. So not only is a buzz or a ding distracting for you, your interviewers will not be impressed that you didn't take the necessary steps to ensure that these interruptions wouldn't occur. First, turn your cell phone off. Keeping your phone on silent instead of turning it off is risky because your phone could still vibrate, there could be an old alarm or timer that you forgot to turn off, and even if you put your phone on do not disturb, if your mom is annoyed that she can't get a hold of you and she tries to call you twice in a row, now you've got a Britney Spears ringtone blaring through your interview. Better play it safe, just turn it off. The next set of notifications you need to consider are those that are coming from your actual computer. So this could include your calendar notifications, reminders, or upcoming emails. Ensure that you navigate to your computer settings to turn off all notifications, and again, as a safety measure, 
Close all open programs and internet browser tabs. Tip number seven, find a quiet private location for your interview. You wanna make sure that you've set aside a private area of your home, such as a bedroom or an office or a private room in a study hall or a library. Essentially, you want an interview room without noise or distractions. So background noise is not only distracting for the interviewers, but it will also be difficult for them to hear what you're saying and vice versa. You wanna make the online interview process as easy as possible for yourself and the interviewers, so ensure that you're somewhere quiet where you can be completely alone. Number eight is notify your housemates or family members of your interview time. Yes, it's happened before. A student has been partway through an interview and their dad walks in and asks them if they have any dirty laundry that they want washing. Super embarrassing, but it's 100% avoidable. It's so important, therefore, to make it known to whoever you're living with, so whether that's your family or your friends, that you'll be taking part in an interview and you cannot be disturbed at any point until it's over. How will they know when you're finished your interview? When you come out of the room and you tell them that you're finished. Don't be afraid to put up a polite sign on the door to your interview room as a reminder that you'll be occupied and to ask that noise is kept to a minimum. Number nine, keep your interview space free from pets. Sometimes people forget to remove their pets from their interview room, which is a big mistake. You could be partway through introducing yourself to your interviewers and all of a sudden your cat jumps up and starts rubbing its face against yours. Even if your pets are very well behaved and you think that they'll just lie, lay down in a corner and be quiet, a random knock on your front door could still cause your dog to start barking, your cat could all of a sudden need to cough up a furball, or your hamster might decide it's time to run a marathon on their exercise wheel. Don't take any chances. Make arrangements ahead of time for someone else to watch your pets or just put them in an area of your home that's far from your interview room. That way, any sounds that they might make won't be picked up during the interview. Video interview tip number 10, choose a neutral background. So now is not the time to show off the posters plastered around your bedroom. Ensure that the background for your interview is neutral and non-distracting. For example, a solid white or gray wall is appropriate, whereas a wall with mirrors or one filled with colorful paintings will be distracting to the interviewers. You want your interviewers to be focused on you and what you have to say, instead of wondering who's autographed that baseball that you have in the background. Tip number 11, ensure that you're well lit. So be sure that you're well lit during your interview so that your interviewers can see you properly and they can view your expressions, your body language and gestures throughout the interview. Your background should not be brighter than you. So this means that you should never have a window behind you as this will blow out your image. Essentially, you'll end up appearing very dark where the window is gonna look like it's radioactive. So instead, position yourself with a plain wall directly behind you. A good way to make sure that your lighting is sufficient is to check the video settings in a video program like Skype first. Even if this isn't going to be the interview platform that you'll be using, it's still a good idea to get an idea. So this way you're not only checking that it's easy to see you, but you can also test out the framing to ensure that there isn't anything random in the background that you thought that you cut out, but you actually didn't. Keep in mind that the aspect ratio of each video program will be slightly different, so always make sure that your background is free from objects and clutter, even beyond what your test actually reveals to you. If you notice that you're not bright enough, use a lamp or a handful of lamps to help light a dark room. And lastly, even if you feel that the room that you're going to interview in is very bright, it's still a good idea to keep a main light on to allow for changes in outside lighting, such as the sun going behind a cloud. Tip number 12, close your windows. Even though we all love fresh air and it's very nice, an open window is just an opportunity for loud noises to interrupt your interview. You never know what's gonna happen outside of your interview room. A person could be walking by with a barking dog, an ambulance could drive by, or a car might beep its horn. So ensuring that the windows in your interview room and adjacent rooms are shut just completely eliminates these possibilities. And the final video interview tip that I have for you, tip number 13, is to keep water close by. So having a glass or a bottle of water within reach during your interview is always a good idea. Your interview could be over an hour in length, so it's quite likely that at some point you might feel thirsty, your voice could become hoarse, or you might even have a tickle in your throat. It's perfectly acceptable to have a few sips of water throughout the interview whenever it's needed, but the last thing that you wanna do is leave the interviewers waiting while you jump up, run to the kitchen, grab a glass of water because you're having a coughing fit just because you fail to prepare in advance and have water ready for you if that moment happens. 
So now let's talk a little bit about how to prepare for your online interviews now that we've gone through all the tips. So if you want to be seen as an excellent applicant during your video interviews, you have to prepare and practice in advance. Most questions that you can expect to be asked during your interviews will be very, very difficult to answer on the spot. Questions such as, tell me about yourself, why do you want to be a doctor or a dentist, a pharmacist? These all require prior brainstorming and consideration in order to structure a well thought out, effective answer. No matter what type of question you receive in your interview, you need to have a strategy for tackling each and every one. While you won't know exactly which questions you'll be asked, if you know how to answer each and every type of question, you'll be able to ace your interview. So how can you best identify and answer any question? By participating in real life mock interviews that will simulate the interview type that you'll be experiencing. So for example, if you have an upcoming panel interview, then participating in a panel interview simulation is a really good idea as it will allow you to experience everything that you'll experience during the actual interview. Real life mock interviews will not only allow you to practice with questions that are likely to come up in your actual interview, but you will actually receive personalized feedback on your responses to each question. And this way you can strengthen or eliminate weaknesses early on and you'll only provide strong answers on your actual interview day. Mock interviews will also help you manage the inevitable emotions and stress that comes with a high pressure interview. There's no getting around the fact that interviews are stressful and being observed and judged can feel really strange for most of us. This constant surveillance just adds to the pressure on you to respond to questions in a way that showcases your best self, because of course you really want to perform well and you want to get into your dream program, but being worried about making mistakes and not knowing how to answer certain questions is going to add on a lot of anxiety that's completely preventable. Participating in mock interviews can significantly reduce, if not eliminate, the stress and anxiety on the actual interview day because you'll know what to expect, you'll have your strategy ready, and you'll be able to tackle any question that might be thrown your way. Most people find virtual interviews strange and awkward as you're essentially talking to your own web camera. Virtual interviews without interviewers means no one to converse with, no nods, smiles, or feedback, no sounds, not even an interview question, only you and your camera. Trust me, it's weird if you don't practice beforehand and if you come across as nervous, confused, robotic, or inauthentic, you're not going to proceed further in the admissions process. So now I want to give you some sample interview questions. In addition to participating in realistic mock interviews, practicing with sample questions is an important part of your video interview preparation. This allows you to get a sense of common questions that will come up during your interview so you can begin formulating responses to questions that you may not have thought about previously. So to get you started, here are some sample questions and categories that you can expect. The classics. So in this category, we have questions like, tell me about yourself, why our program, why our school, and why should we select you? Now we go into the personal category section and these are some examples you can expect. Questions like, what is your greatest strength? What is your greatest weakness? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? What is your biggest accomplishment? What is your proudest moment? What are your hobbies and what makes you mad? Now for situational interview questions. I have three examples that I wanna give you. Number one. You're working alone in a convenience store as a cashier late at night. An older man comes in staggering, appears disoriented, and you smell alcohol on his breath. On the way out, he bumps into a shelf and knocks some cereal boxes off. He tries to put the boxes back, but he cannot manage this task. What do you do? Here's a second example. You're a carousel operator at a midway fair and a female employee arrives to take over your shift. You notice that she smells of marijuana and her eyes are red. What do you do? And the third one that I have for you. You are at home in your apartment watching TV when you hear screaming coming from your neighbor's apartment. You open the door and look out to see a man that you don't recognize come out of your neighbor's apartment and hurry towards the elevators. Your neighbor is at the doorway crying and you notice a bruise around her eye before she goes back inside her apartment. What do you do? So those situational questions are really common, especially if you have a multiple mini interview. So make sure you know how to answer those questions effectively. The next category is behavioral. So example questions are, tell me about a time that you failed. Tell me about a challenge that you overcame. Tell me about a time you worked with others. Give me an example of a time you were in conflict with a peer and give me an example of a time that you demonstrated leadership. 
Okay, so that'll wrap up another one of our videos. Hopefully you enjoyed it, so make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions. It's especially important for you to subscribe, that way you won't miss any of our upcoming videos, which will be full of advice for writing personal statements, filling out professional or graduate applications, interview tips, and lots of more information. So thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.